sad, but that's the way it is. Since by then, Mel Mabel and Mel's Uncle Henry also owned the abutting Morrison property. Mel also had a chicken house. Chicken house is built down there. Mel and Mabel had one of the largest poultry farms in the state in the 1940s, producing mainly hatchlings for other poultry farms. Had a pretty detailed breeding program. He kept track of which hens and what roosters the chicks came from. He eventually settled on selling primarily sexlings and silver cross chicks. Sexlings were the result of crossing barred rock hens with Rhode Island red roosters. The crossbreeding resulted in black pullets that produced brown eggs, which are favored by New Englanders. Silver cross hens were also good egg layers and made good broiling or roasting chickens. Mel and Mabel had four children, James, Doris, Eleanor, and Michael. Doris had a career in the Army as a medic. When she retired, she lived with her mother at the old Morrison house, and she now lives here in the center. Thank you, Doris, for coming. Eleanor, um, she was supposed to be emailing me when I was supposed to write about her email, but she uh, went to BU, uh, Boston University, and she went to uh, Illinois, and Mary, you know, winters in Naples, Florida, and goes back to Illinois, and she's doing very well for herself. Michael married and then bought the Merrill Farm in Gray in June of 1961. They have the oldest continuous herd of Holstein cows. Is that the state or the country? The state? Country. In the country, okay. A little church is. They were among the first to ex export frozen cow embryos to the United Kingdom and later to mainland Europe and Japan. You can correct me whatever we get right on that. <laughs> In a previous presentation, we learned that the Blanchard family first came to Cumberland in 1773, and successive generations worked westward. Tonight, I told you the first Wilson came to Falmouth about the same time, and successive generations migrated north and east. In 1945, the inevitable collision happened. My father, James Wilson, married Marie Blanchard. They lived here on the farm with his parents and siblings and his uncle Henry for a couple of years. In 1949, Mel and Mabel and the younger children moved down to the Morrison house and we lived in the L of the farm while Henry had the original structure. Eventually there were 10 of us children and Henry let us use the upstairs bedrooms in the main house. Henry passed away in 1970, 1970 and my father eventually ended up with the farm. I'll tell another story about Henry, but I'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> when Henry was alive, they had Guernsey milk cows. I learned from my uncle Mike that originally Oakers Dairy would only accept milk from Guernsey cows. Eventually, when they relaxed the rule, the herd was gradually re replaced with Holsteins. Holsteins produced more milk, and when I was growing up, that is all that we had. Dad was a dairy farmer until about 1977. Our barn and hay barn had burned down in 1974. Our milk tank ruptured and we lost all our milk in 1975. The roof caved in on the new barn about then and he got discouraged. So in 1977, he threw in the towel, sold off the livestock, and reverted back to the old Wilson tradition of dealing in real estate. In 1984, he had my brothers Gary and Jeffrey join him and they formed a construction company. Dad would buy a piece of property, the crew would clear and build on it, and Dad would sell it. Cyrus Wilson and his children once owned quite a bit of Wilson Cumberland. My great uncle Henry once bragged that he could start walking from the river by Mill Road and go all the way over and jump into Forest Lake without ever leaving Wilson land. But as the children grew and needed a place of their own, our family farm was like farms everywhere else. They got smaller and smaller until there was no one more left to split off. Family members died off and there was no one left in the line where the heirs weren't interested in staying, so that piece of land got sold off. Woodley and Wilson's land is all gone, Cornelius Wilson's land is all gone, and the last of Cyrus Wilson's land has been di divided up. The Wilson family, as in my siblings and I, still own Cyrus's house, 
Four pieces of the original homestead are still owned by a man with the last name of Wilson. My brother Gary, my brother Jeff, my nephew Andy, and my nephew Gary. One of my sisters, my son, and another nephew all own a piece also. Their last names aren't Wilson, but they're still direct descendants. Cyrus came to West Cumberland about around 1812. I wonder if he would be glad to know that 200 years later, he has great, great, great grandchildren still living on this land and the housing belt. Thank you. Encore. <laughs> Start over, Nance. You want to hear my Henry and Mother Henry story or my other stories? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got the same generation. Yes, we're going to go home. Just finish the presentation. There you go. And wait for a couple minutes, okay? Thank you very much. What a